Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, we're going to move forward now in this training center. Uh, we've talked the last two videos about uh, the why. Why do we become Bible study teachers? Why do we reach the lost? Uh, but we're going to be talking about some what for the next two videos. And we're talking about what Bible study should I teach? Uh, and so the next video, we're going to actually talk about certain Bible studies and, and what they mean and why, why they are better than other Bible studies at certain times. Uh, but I'm going to teach you something um, that is probably the most important and simple thing that I've ever taught uh, Bible study teachers because this builds your confidence. You're going to find everything about this website is about helping you build your confidence and becoming a better Bible study teacher and a soul winner. Um, but what this is, uh, I've had this Bible since I was, I don't know, a teenager. Um, and uh, I have taught, I don't know how many Bible studies from this uh, in people's homes and coffee shops on airplanes. I've taught a lot of Bible studies with this. And th there was just a process that I learned. Now, this is not deep at all. There's a PDF there uh, that you can download that talks about this as well. Um, but I learned that you need to have the right answers at your fingertips when I was very young. When I was a kid, I would go around the neighborhood and I would invite people to church. Uh, my parents would allow me to do that. I would not allow my kids to do that by themselves. But I was just this little guy and I was walking around. I think I was about nine, ten years old. And I went to Mr. Ford's house. And uh, Mr. Ford was on his front porch and he was smoking a cigarette. And uh, I have talked to Mr. Ford. Matter of fact, I was a friend of Mr. Ford's. But I suppose I thought today was the day that I was going to lower the boom and let him know. And I looked at him and I said, you know, you're going to go to hell for smoking that cigarette. Well, he was a very nice old man. And he just smiled at me. And he said, really? He said, where'd you hear that? I said, well, the Bible says it. The Bible says not to smoke cigarettes. And he said, well, I don't think I've ever read that in the Bible. I said, well what Bible do you have? And he said, well, the, the King James Version. And I said, well, that's your problem. You've got to have the Holy Bible. And uh, he smiled, and then later he told my parents, and they have been laughing at me ever since because of that. But I learned early on in witnessing that I need to have the correct answers around me. And so what this process is, it's simply uh, highlighting your Bible. That's all it is. But there's some things that I learned through the process um, that, that helped me, and there's nothing deep, there's nothing earth-shaking, uh, it just simply works. It's simple, but it simply works. Uh, and so this is what we're going to be talking about, is beveling our Bible. And so what you're going to do, I'm just going to walk you through it real quick, um, you're going to take a highlighter, and this Bible, I have uh, three subjects uh, highlighted, um, and this is the first Bible I ever did, so I just left it as it is, and that's dealing with the oneness of God, uh, Jesus name baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost and so you get three highlighters uh, and you simply are going to go through a mark now on that PDF you'll find a list of scriptures if you get the um, I go reference book there's a lot more scriptures in them uh, if you uh, get a uh, word of flame Bible in the front of that Bible you'll probably find a list of scriptures most of them have it um, but anyway so we take these three subjects and uh, simply what you do is you go through and you mark um, the uh, reference, the scripture. Now you can mark the whole scripture or just the, the number itself. Uh, for instance, Deuteronomy 6 and 4, you can mark the whole scripture or just the number 4. Um, and then, but this is the key. When you take it, you're going to go to the edge of the, of the uh, page and you're going to mark the very edge of that page. Now this is very important. Some people will do it kind of on the, uh, sorry, some people will do it on the on the edge of the paper but kind of in a little bit. They don't go all the way to the edge. You need to let it run off of the edge but you don't need to do that while it's all together. If you run it like that you're just going to mark a whole bunch of pages. But if you'll just take it like this and you'll mark, pull it off the, off the, uh, rest of the book, mark one side, then mark the other side. And uh, you're going to do that with all the oneness of God's scriptures. You just mark all the oneness scriptures. And then you're going to mark all the Jesus name baptism scriptures or, or Holy Ghost. And so all you do is you, you mark it, then you mark the end. And when you get done, when you bevel your Bible just like this, you can see all the way down uh, the scriptures. Now, another important point is even if you are 
um, going to mark a scripture. Let's find another one that's here. So you mark it and you the marking is down here. You still want to mark all your oneness, in, in my case, all your oneness edges up at the top. That way, when you look, all your blue edges are right here. Even though the scripture is down a little bit, all your edges up here, so you know where to look. So if someone says, uh, you're talking about you know the oneness of God, you know right where to go. Now, why do we do this? Because if you don't take the time to do this, what will happen is you're going to be so scared to do a Bible study. This is what I found. People are so scared that, yes, I have a Bible study, but when they ask me questions, I'm not going to know what to say. What if they ask me a question that's not in this Bible study? Well, first of all, uh, we'll talk about this later, but one of the best things you can say is, that's a good question, let me get back to you. That's one of the best things you can say. Don't try to answer something that you don't know. Matter of fact, by them asking a question that you don't know, and you say, that's a good question, let me get the answer and get back to you, they just set up your next Bible study. So there's no problem not knowing the scriptures. But at the same time, the confidence that you have uh, when you know that I can go from one scripture to another and, and teach um, the oneness of God or the, about the Holy Ghost or baptism in Jesus' name, or maybe you will going to mark miracles because you want to build someone's faith. And so one of the things, so in my case, oneness is up here. Jesus' name, baptism is right in this area. Holy Ghost is down here. But you can just section off and do oneness, Holy Ghost, baptism, miracles, you know, whatever. You Just one subject after another. Now, you don't want to do tons of subject because then it gets all muddy. Uh, but you want to find out what you want to focus on and mark it. There was a lady in our church uh, that worked at the uh, district attorney's office and she was always scared because she's dealing with really smart people uh, to tell, tell them about Jesus and to get a Bible study going with them. Well, once I taught this at the church, the boldness that came on her, next thing you know, she's talking to this lady about Jesus and able to open her Bible and say, here's a scripture, here's a scripture. They got into a Bible study um, and, and there's still ongoing relationships happening here. But the boldness and the confidence that comes when you have the scriptures. And so sometimes you're going to be in a situation um, where, here, I have this Bible study. I have this when I was a teenager as I said before, I taught a lot of Bible studies on airplanes, and I had all the scriptures right here marked. I was able to go from one to another, and it just really builds your confidence. Now, another thing you might want to do uh, is do it as a group. As I mentioned earlier, um, what I did is I just told the young people, uh, and I also did this with the church, but I told them, bring three highlighters or four highlighters. So they all came, and we did not discuss them. We just marked one scripture after another. I'd say, turn to Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Everyone turn, now mark it, boom. Uh, turn to Isaiah 9 and 6, mark it, boom. We just went right through and just mark, 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 mark. And then uh, we came back another night and said, now uh, we're going to um, start knowing how to put these scriptures together. So I said, now turn to the person beside you and give them a one God scripture. They're all nervous at first. Oh man, I don't know if I can do it. But as soon as they realize, all I have to do is bevel my Bible and I can see one uh, verse after another that I can turn to. And so when that confidence came to them, they would say, Oh, oh, this is a great one here. This is one that proves the oneness of God. Or here's one that proves Jesus' name, baptism. And all of a sudden, the church was alive. Everyone was uh, sharing scriptures back and forth. You know, a lot of times we, we kind of know the scriptures and we can quote them, but we don't have the confidence because we can't go right to it and show it to them. But when you bevel your Bible, you're able to do it. So I hope you take time to do it. It is one of the, I believe, one of the most confident building things any Bible study teacher can do. If you are a new Bible study teacher and you're saying, man, I want the confidence to go teach the Word of God, it's amazing. It will take you a few hours to do, but as I said on this PDF here, uh, there'll be a list, but you can find lists other places, write them down, put them out there, and uh, get, get that Bible locked and loaded. Uh, you know, a lot of people, again, mark their Bibles, but by just doing that simple process of marking the edge, making sure you get it all the way to the edge, don't mark the pages around it, it's just one truth after another just jumping at you off the page. And so this is a good start if you're going to be a Bible study teacher. 
Take time, do it, and I hope you're effective at teaching the Word of God.